I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hi, guys. Hey, hey. hey. Welcome to the Nailed It After Show. This is the final episode, episode eight for season four. We're so hey. excited and excited to join us. We have a guest <laughs> today, a very special guest. Ooh. His name is Patrick <laughs> Duty. He's the oh, producer on the show. So we're super excited to have you today, Patrick. Welcome. Well, thank you. I wanted the guys to show you something before you started that I think you'd really enjoy. Not only did Jay walk off with one of these babies, but so did I. Oh my <laughs> God. Yes. 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 I love it that. Was a, it was a gift from the production at the end of the uh, season, which was very nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's that's amazing. amazing. <laughs> That is so funny. Yeah, it was cool. All right, so we have Alisa and Eric with us today. I don't know if you guys realize it, but it's Eric Jules birthday again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited that he's here with us today. He's not great in the kitchen by his own admission, but banana bread is his specialty. Yes, thank you guys. Yes. Yeah, so luckily tonight, I will not be making my own birthday cake. My roommates will be handling that for me. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully it'll be a great show for the birthday. <laughs> Nice. And then Alisa Acosta Milan, who is um, a huge Nailed It fan. She's been watching episodes like back to back to back. Uh, she's obsessed with baking shows. And we here at our show think that she should try and get on Nailed It and give it a shot. I don't know if that's a compliment or a D, but we just think you'd be <laughs> fun to watch. We're not saying you would fail. We just think you'd be awesome to watch. <laughs> I think that would be so fun to be on the show. And I'm so excited to have Patrick on here because I have a ton of questions, as I'm sure oh you goodness. guys do as well. So I'm <laughs> I don't know if I have any answers. <laughs> he said he doesn't know if he has any answers. I love it. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. So this episode, we have Christina Tosi, who I love. I don't know if you guys know her, but she... Um, is the creator of a restaurant called um, Milk Bar in New yeah. York, and we just got one in LA. She had a special chef table episode on Netflix. She's just all around awesome and like great at desserts. So I was really excited to see her as a guest judge. And then we have for our amateur bakers, Rachel, who's a science teacher, uh, Ronald, who's the dean at a high school and has been um, engaged, I guess, or has a girlfriend of 13 years 13 and he said he wanted years. to marry her but he wanted that to remain a surprise I was like well it's been 13 <laughs> years there's no surprise um and then Jay who was a retired army helicopter pilot which sounds like a really mm -hmm. exciting job um so round one was baker's choice and it was wedding band mini cakes um yeah so what were your first thoughts seeing the mini cakes Eric <laughs> anytime that there's facial details <laughs> in a round I know we're in for a treat always because oh, it's either it's just going to be a complete flat face with no details <laughs> or it's going to look demonic and I love both of them I love when we get either of those so I was super excited when I saw what they had to make for this I was like oh this is perfect so Patrick, when you guys come up with the idea for the challenge, yes. like, are you immediately cracking up? Like, okay, I think we should do wedding, you know, these mini cakes with the wedding band on top. I would just be laughing, just thinking about how these people are gonna just crash and burn this, this whole situation. <laughs> it's actually a great question because we actually, we go through a very rigorous, pro I mean, yes, we are always laughing, but there is a very <laughs> rigorous process of like trying to understand what we want to make everything that we do comes from comedy right comedy is like mm -hmm. the top line so we try to think about like what's just already funny so when the when the doors open we have a what we call a door pop when the door pops and you you see the first uh, for the baker's choice you want people to go oh my god that's crazy or <laughs> laugh whatever so right off the bat they've got to be kind of goofy but then we have to also realistically think about <clears throat> pardon me what potentially is going to make for a great cake uh, uh, on the side of the bakers. Like we wanna make sure we give them something that, that's possible to do. I know people think that it's crazy that we think like that, but we do. Um, we think about the time and everything and all the little details. Um, but yeah, we have to figure out like what's also gonna give us a really funny response. And so, you know, you brought up that character work is always gonna be in for a real treat. It's true, whenever we have mm -hmm. faces or a character or a figure or something at the pose, um, it's always a good place to see people really try to 
come up with clever ways to do to do that. <laughs> so. I love that you said when you first see the reveal, you know, we're supposed to elicit a response a response from us. Alisa, what was your initial reaction upon seeing the mini cakes with the wedding bands on top? Well, it's funny that you were talking about when the door opens, because it's funny because every single episode, it's going to happen. You're going to open the door and they're going to look at it and say, oh my goodness, we have to make that. And it's so funny to me because I'm like, yes, you're a contestant on the show. You have to make that. That's what you do <laughs> on the show. They, they um, always are kind of like blindsided. <laughs> like, oh, we really, you know, like, do we have to make, they always ask if we have to make all of it. <laughs> that's the thing. You don't usually see that, but they're like, do we have to make all the parts? Or like, no, yeah, you got to do the whole thing. Anything that's edible is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's so funny to me because Nicole's like, yes, you have to make the whole thing. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I get it, better get started. My favorite part is when she says, you have 45 minutes, go, why are you standing here? And they're like, oh, okay, let me go walk to my station. No, like you need a whole ass and get over to your station because you're wasting <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so the mini cakes were hilarious. The guy on the keytar was like the long, like yes. curly blonde hair, <laughs> so 80, that was hilarious. Yeah. And then, um, which what ended up being for the the woman a donut on her head that was just yeah, we'll get it we'll get into that we'll get into that so rachel's reading the directions and she says these directions are not helpful at all i think it was so funny to do the want want like trombone on her because she was done downtrodden from the first like clip of her she was just like I can't I, do this. This is hard. My <laughs> arms are tired. It was so funny. Yeah. What did you guys think about um, the contestants? Well, I, I, thought it, go ahead, Alisa. I thought it was funny because Rachel seemed like she was really lost and she was taking her time. And I understand that you want to make sure you're getting the ingredients right <laughs> and you're putting everything together, but you literally only have like 45, maybe an hour to get everything going and put together for a final product. So Patrick, I want to ask you for yes. the directions, is it really broken down for them? Cause it kind of seems sometimes when they're asking, it says, okay, use one container. And they're like, but what do I, like how much of the container do I use? Like, so, is it really broken down for them? It's, it's, uh, gosh, how do I put this? So it, it, because it's a competition, um, we have very specific rules about how, what information we give them. Um, so in some cases, the directions will basically just say like decorate, like we don't explain exactly how oh. you're supposed to roll things on decorating because it's like, they just kind of fly through. So when they say like the decoration, the, 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 the instructions feel very light. They, they are, um, they do tell them measurements. They do give them those kind of things, but mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. it's, it's in larger generalities in many cases. So okay. that's, wow. um, so, That's uh, really interesting and good to know. So, <laughs> um, so Rachel was kind of downtrodden, and then Ronald was just like sweating the whole time, like the squeaky <laughs> sound effect on him, and then blah blah. Or Rachel was just heavy cracking up. He was sweating a ton when he said, "I don't want to get any sweat into the cake." I was just like, "Uh, that oh, no. visual." <laughs> Uh, by the way, that sweating in the cake thing that we, we have to take it very seriously because they are always sweating. Mm -hmm. and, um, so we have to, uh, by the way, I just want to point out that uh, Kim Seeley, who's a culinary producer who is incredible, uh, just commented to me in a separate chat that I need, need a haircut. <laughs> I'd like to remind her that uh, there is a quarantine on in Los Angeles. Hey. And I cannot go get a haircut. That's right. You don't want to try that by yourself. You know what, Kim? You no. need a haircut. Kim. How's that? You need a haircut. I'm not even looking at you. Um, you just know. Yeah, we try to. It's the sanitary part of it is always kind of mm -hmm. a, a funny thing. So um, we, we do definitely do not want them sweating in the food. Yeah. yeah, that would be gross. So the the blast chiller is giving people a run for their money. Well, at least giving Rachel a run for her money. She couldn't even mm -hmm. open it. She had such a hard oh, time. Yeah. And then she just like looked at him and was like, I'll put it in the fridge instead. That was so funny. Right. So that actually is a fridge behind her. Those are fridges. Mm -hmm. And then the blast chiller is off to the side. So there's mm -hmm. one shared blast mm -hmm. chiller. And then they do have fridges. I I'm not sure why it was she couldn't open it. Sometimes the, the refrigerators have timers on them. That after they've been opened the first amount oh. of time, they lock so that they keep the, oh. the temperature cool. Mm. But I don't know, uh, and maybe if Kim is still making fun of my haircut, <laughs> I'm gonna text chat and tell me why the refrigerator would lock. I don't remember who it was. But sometimes people do have a hard time opening 
Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things yeah. on that show. Um, they seemingly have all kinds of obstacles that are created, <laughs> I think, just on their own accord. Uh, we, we try not to make the doors difficult, but they manage to find a way. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a product of like the many freaking out. They're freaking out anyway. Mm -hmm. So they get done with these, these cakes, which, oh my gosh, are just hilarious. Um, <laughs> nobody really does the hair. I was so looking forward to seeing the curl, like the blonde <laughs> apes curl. And she just did like an orange, <laughs> like a, just a tube of hair going across. What did you guys think about the final products, Derek? Again, I was just so happy with how all of the people turned out. Like they had the rough shape of being a human, but I was like, <laughs> that's like a different form. <laughs> of a human you did your best and i'm so happy like for, if i remember right he at least had a keytar with this person but i was like yep everything else you you tried i'm happy you tried what'd you think about the finals louisa well jay's was the one that looked more like most like a person it didn't look like his person that he was supposed to make, but it, it looked like a person. So I thought, okay, he's probably going to win because his looked the best. I mean, I think they all tried. I mean, they always do, but his looked the most like it. So mm -hmm. I think props to him, especially because, you know, he's military, I'm military as well. So when he was saying that, you know, I have to have everything structured and this way and this way and this way, I think it helped him a little bit, but then he came off a little bit cocky and arrogant as well, I think. Oh, you thought catch. so? I didn't think. I really, I really liked him. I thought it was funny how his little person had candles instead of drumsticks, but had drumsticks. I thought, like, yeah, work with what you got. And him around, and Nicole was like, his whole back is out. I was like, oh my gosh. That was like the funniest comment, because he hadn't done anything to the back of the whole like little person design. Oh my gosh. But he did a good job on the drum. I thought his yeah. drum was in really good tech, right? Like, yeah, and I, so, and I loved how he got like when he won, he got the guitar, which Patrick, I want to ask you because in like past episodes, we <laughs> he's for those who are listening on the podcast, he's playing his own guitar. Uh, we have seen a lot of times they'll get like a mixing bowl or they'll get pots and pans. How do you determine what the winner is going to get? Well, I mean, that's a good question. We obviously, we have a lot of relationships with companies that manufacture baking uh, supplies that love to be part of the show. So, um, you know, we do purchases and we get stuff and we give things away. Um, in the case of the wedding one, we just thought that it would be funnier um, to kind of go in with a the theme um, of mm -hmm. what the, what we were making the cakes. And we just thought, what a goofy, again, what's, what's <laughs> funny? And it's like, it's funny to get a guitar as a prize. What's funny about that is that <laughs> Jay Hanshaw, Actually, I don't think this made an error, but he was, he was like, I want the stand mixer after we actually. Did, actually <laughs> I was just going to ask that. Has anybody ever said, I don't want this. I want something else. No, never <laughs> once. We give this really cool. We did a big, we get the key tars. We're all excited. And he's, oh, I'd rather have the stand. Mixer. Uh, that's what, I honestly, that's what I would be thinking, but I would just be happy with whatever you guys give me. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, that is hilarious. That key tar is so funny. So then we go on to round two, which is the Vegas wedding cake. So this wedding cake is insane. It has rice crispy dice, um, uh, rice treats, dice made of uh, dice made of rice treats. Sorry, on the top, um, and then in the center is a styrofoam cutout, and then the bottom is cake, which I thought was really interesting. It just had a lot of stuff going yeah. on, and we know the more pieces, the more steps. This is about to be a mess. So I was like. Yes, like especially when you saw the people, I was like, "Oh, these people are gonna be hilarious!" Like the man and woman <laughs> pair in the middle. I was like, "This, this is gonna be great." Um, so the first thing Jay says is, "I made two cakes in my entire life, and I'm supposed to make that," which was hilarious. <laughs> it's like, dude, you just won the last challenge. You got it. <laughs> At that point, actually, I had all my. I had my money on Jay. I was like, I think Jay is going to come through. I, I feel like structure is going to play an important part. And I think he's going to have the stuff together. What were you well, guys' first thoughts off the top in round two, Elisa? Well, first of all, when Jay said that, I'm thinking, bro, you're on nailed it. You know you're going to have to make some type of crazy cake, especially in the second <laughs> round. They're not going to give you something that like a four-year-old could do. Like, you know, so I thought that was funny that he said that. Um, I thought it was interesting that they had styrofoam because at first I thought they were gonna have to make the whole cake and I'm thinking how are you supposed to make that 
So Patrick, for that piece of the cake, did you yeah. guys specifically do that because you thought it was going to be too hard for them to make? Or what were you guys thinking for that? That's a great question. Um, our, our cake designer had found those styrofoam because they have a motor inside of it, right? So mm -hmm. it can't be edible part. Um, okay. And we want to be something the, the kind of the spinning thing would be really kind of a hokey Vegas thing. So we, we got those to add to the cake, knowing that the challenge would be that they'd have to make the figures not that part of the cake so mm -hmm. um, okay so it was just it was the nature of the engineering of the cake that's how those cakes would really be done um and so when we use current cake trends uh, you know she saw that at a, at a cake show um and bought oh. that from the person who was selling those that's how we we designed that's a lot great. of cakes based on oh on, on so cool yeah so in this in this part sorry we have to breeze through here it was funny because rachel said i don't want to do this anymore as she was rolling out bondage uh, she uses the animal cracker as her dog instead of doing the animal because she's single. Um, so that was really funny. And then we get the reveal. Um, we hear that Ronald's cake looks like a soccer looks ball like a soccer with ball. a green <laughs> underneath, which I thought was really funny. What did you guys think about the final cake, Eric? Yeah, Ronald's was my favorite. Just purely from right before they even said, oh, it looks like a soccer ball. I turned to my roommate and go, those don't look like dice, right? Like, those look like <laughs> soccer balls. Am I right? And they said, I was like, perfect, valid, <laughs> valid opinion to have if the judges think so as well. Hilarious. What did you think about the finale, Elisa? The final look? Well, I mean, I thought that the same thing that Eric thought about the whole soccer balls. I thought that was interesting. But I mean, he, he got the colors right, so that was good. I thought Rachel's was hilarious because she used a popsicle, mm -hmm. stick. Using a popsicle stick. She basically was like, I'm running out of time over this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just going to put a popsicle stick. And I knew that the judges were going to be like, ah, but also think it was hilarious. <laughs> and then Jay kind of had a little bit of an issue with his fondant technique that they pointed out and that he kind of just, the people were, they looked like they were smushed together. Like she said, they looked like Siamese twins, but they were like mm -hmm. flat Siamese twins. So that was a little bit awkward to see, but I mean, besides the fact that he baked his cake too long, but Jock said it actually wasn't too bad. I mean, he, I think he did a decent job. Yeah, he did. A, he did a good job. So Jay <laughs> wins. Jay wins. I, for me, the highlight is that Wex, Wes comes out in some like sleeveless, yes. ta sleeveless <laughs> tuxedo with like these cuffs, which is hilarious. I have to say this season, you cannot beat Wes on costumes. Like nope. the sloth <laughs> costume, like the chaps for the... Like every Indiana time Jones. Out, it's been hilarious. <laughs> like a straight fool. With that, I was just like, what is he wearing? That was so funny to me. So I want to um, get more into the interview portion and ask Patrick a few questions. Um, so I think that you started, well, I guess this isn't your first season, Patrick, because you did the holiday edition that came right before the season. Yes, and I did last year's uh, mm -hmm. spring and holiday season. So this is my, okay. I've done two years on the show, basically. Okay, so you've done Four yes. cycles, two years, however we call it in unscripted. Got <laughs> I really, really felt um, like the comedy go up, like really up the ante this season, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. like with the different themes and um, like the 90s episode was probably my favorite episode where oh, you guys good. had a full on intro with the song. So that, I'll tell you about that intro. The intro was not, these are things, I think it's important to note that there's a massive team of people who are all sort of integrating into how we build these shows and create the comedy. So <laughs> we didn't intend for an opening when we shot the show, it was never even part of the idea. <laughs> it wasn't until they got into Post and Gail and Anika who uh, work in Post, but Gail's another EP and then Anika is a supervising producer. Um, they they came up with that as they were cutting it and they, they kind of didn't tell anybody and then when they when they started sending out the rough cuts we just turned it on and suddenly there's like this very 90s opening and oh that's awesome like, oh this is great so <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like it just it, it it kind of organically grows out of what we're building it's it was never like we we don't kind of go into coming up a straight parody we just think about what we think would be what's gonna create a uh, kind of a a, for humor like what's going to make things funny for the for the contestants and the bakers and the finding all the humor but a lot of the the humor on the baking side is found in the post now on nicole side it's like nicole is just funny and she is by the way has an extremely difficult job i mean she's 
we shoot very long days, mm-hmm. you know, 10 hours. Uh, oh, wow. And they're on the whole time, right? Because there's a long baking and there's a lot of time and they have to look at the kitchen and we do a walkthrough. There's a lot of stuff that happens in a, in a baking show that you never, you're never going to see. Um, and every single minute that we are taping, Nicole and Jacques are sitting at that. They never leave. They don't like go away and then come back to do jokes. Like they're there watching wow. the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. Nicole's energy has to constantly be like this high. And, right. um, and you know, it's exhausting, but she manages it to constantly be funny. And um, it's kind of like, there's, there's no, it's just like, you just tell her what's happening. And then she finds the joke. You tell her what's going on. She finds the humor. She can find humor in any single thing, whether it's when they're making stuff and the cakes, what they're doing, if they make a funny look or whatever. So all of Nicole stuff is just Nicole, just being her and just finding all the jokes. That is just a hundred percent what Nicole wow. does. Wow. Yeah. Well, and then that makes, that makes total sense why you had to go with a comedian. Cause she's just great off the cuff, yeah, great I mean, on her feet. She's yeah. just hilarious. Her and Jacques' chemistry just totally oh, make that show. Fantastic. It's very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for being with us and answering all of our questions. <laughs> You're awesome. We're going to be following you on social media. Where can uh, our super fans, follow you like how can uh, they get what do you you follow me today you can uh, yes i did mm-hmm. that's it uh and so do you at least uh, it, uh, yes patrick j duty uh, on twitter is my best place i'm not a, you're not gonna find me on instagram so okay uh, mm-hmm. that's a young that's a young man's game instagram <laughs> awesome <laughs> okay so um alisa where can these guys find you they can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Alyssa underscore Costa. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. And Patrick, thank you so much for being no, here. No, thank we- you for having This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And we learned you, so much. Yes, Patrick, thank you so much for coming and like talking with us. It was great. Thank, thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter at EricJewel11. Yeah, thanks for soon- stopping by, guys. All right, you can find me at Host K on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Sweet. We'll see you later. I play Bye. out, but it's not plugged in anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.